In November this year, Thailand is going to host ASEAN Summit for Leaders, a group of regional civil organizations, or CSO, is looking forward to interface with regional body to voice the concerns on environmental issues. They call on ASEAN to balance between economic development and the negative consequences on human settlement and well-being along the Mekong River, claiming that the environmental issues are regarded by international communities as the basic for sustainable development. ASEAN has been criticized by the group for outweighing economic and business security and successes to the environmental on human interests. What is the main purpose of this conference? Uh, this conference is a part of the Mekong ASEAN Environmental Week, which is the event that we are trying to set together among many of the civil society groups and uh, academia group and also some local community in the ASEAN region. Um, we are trying to reflect our opinion on the environment and very importantly we would like to have some of the local communities representative from the ASEAN country to talk about their own issues and then in combination between the actual situation and you know the demand from the from the local level we, we would like to put together the statement right that we plan to submit um, more or less uh, publicly uh, to the uh, ASEAN leaders during this ASEAN summit that's happening in Thailand. In 2009, CSO proposed an ASEAN civil society dialogue on environment as a framework to communicate openly in public with ASEAN governments, asking that it launch a fourth strategic pillar on the environment and prepare a blueprint that commits member states to placing international based practices on environmental sustainability at the center of decision making. In 2009, we proposed what we call a dialogue for environment that again we would like to communicate right, openly in public with the uh, ASEAN government that we were pointed out about the three key problematic issues, the large-scale project that emerging a lot in the region. The second one is the climate change. That, and the last one is about the biodiversity that being you know, destroyed by, because of other you know, projects in the region. But there seems to be no improvement even 10 years have passed. The statement that released during this event, you know, after 10 years, is linked directly to these three areas of our concern because we haven't been seeing, you know, improvement. But I think the situation, we think the situation has been worse, worsened now. Under this framework, we, we propose what we call the fourth pillar on environment which is actually a two meaning, right? The first thing is that if ASEAN can be progressive enough to review the pillar, not only three pillars, but understand that environment is a very important dimension and it actually is linked to all the three pillars that existing with ASEAN. But to review and to really put more emphasis in environment, maybe we have to talk about the ASEAN blueprints and so on which is not going to be that easy, you know, for, to kind of to, to make the structure of ASEAN to be, uh, you know, totally new. But at the same time, the fourth pillar of environment is our kind of the campaign. We flag this idea in order to, to stress that ASEAN need to looking at the environment in a new yeah. uh, vision. The most important thing is that you have to listen from the people on the ground and people should be able to be the platform to support the people as well, not only with the state and the business, which is now going on. So the Mekong River, as an international river, also suffer from the context of Mekong upper part in China. Mm -hmm. So there are dams built in China. There are also new dams built around international rivers and tributaries. So all these need to be put into the context of energy projects, mm -hmm. which are oftentimes seen only in terms of positive uh, impacts, in terms of uh, security of the energy sources for economic development. 
but economic development to be legitimate in this SDG era must be a part of energy security, answering also the community security, human security issues in the region. Without answering it, uh, complementarities of the economic and the social would not be secure. As you already mentioned about the dam in China, can you explain me more about how does it affect uh, natural resources and people in this region? So this issue really need to be put forward among the ASEAN leaders as well as China to be able to be accountable to the whatever not only positive but also negative impacts of dam building on the river basins and including the security of livelihoods of the fish of the and ecosystem in the lower part of the river so now at the moment we are hopeful that the agenda of ASEAN will be really able to answer to the balancing the economic with the social and the human security agendas. Many of the environmental issues is not only uh, for one country anymore, yeah. it's crossing border. So maybe we have the, right now, we, maybe we can have a little bit more expectation that we can solve the problem regionally mm -hmm. rather than starting from the country level. And that will be a new step for us as well among the people who are working on environmental issues in this region. Any expectation or is there any possibility for this group, particular group, right. to involve in this upcoming meeting? ASEAN summit? Uh, not, not very much so. I, we don't have that hope because as you may know, we already been refused, right? I mean, mm -hmm. under, with using the uh, frame of the ASEAN People Forum, uh, we already asked if the civil society group, not only environment, but the, all the group can meet with the ASEAN leaders um, using the uh, platform that we used to have uh, that we call the interface. But uh, we were being refused right, to meet with them this, this year because we haven't organized a big uh, uh, you know, conference called the ASEAN People Forum yet. So I don't think only the, the environment group can really enter to do the direct um, communicate or talk to them. But of course the results of the Mekong ASEAN Environmental Week will be submit publicly through the media, right? Uh, yeah. uh, also with our statement at the end of this event. We should be able to propose what we would like to speak as well, right, to them. The CSO plan to hold a big forum in September in parallel with the ASEAN Foreign Minister meeting to voice their concern again and try to establish an open and public dialogue to ensure the voices of people are heard, respected and included in future discussion agenda.